What's going on everybody and welcome to a deep learning with Python and of course PyTorch tutorial series. This tutorial series is going to start from the very very basics assuming maybe you don't know anything about deep learning and then we'll be getting into more complex types of neural networks and applications for them. So anyways to get started of course you're going to need PyTorch. You're also going to need Python. I am assuming you already have at least Python, and my hope is that you at least understand the basics of Python, as well as object-oriented programming. So if you don't have either of those two things, probably you should stop <laughs> and either find someone else's tutorials, or I've got tutorials on both the basics. It's a pretty short series. It's like 13 parts or something like that. Uh, and then also uh, object-oriented programming. Again, it's not that many videos. Uh, you should be able to get through it pretty quickly. You should have a basic understanding of Python because I'm just assuming you do. I'm not going to be talking about basic Python concepts. Uh, and then object-oriented programming because in general your neural network is going to be a class. So if you don't understand that, you're going to be fuzzy about certain things, and then you're also probably fuzzy about neural networks. It's just not a good combination. You should be solid on how object-oriented programming works first, uh, and then jump into this. Next up, uh, I'm assuming you guys don't, at least some of you guys probably don't know about neural networks, or at least don't know much, so I'm going to go really, really briefly into how neural networks work. You, you can get by here with a pretty... Uh, high level understanding of neural networks and be just fine and then you could if you want to be very successful you're going to need a pretty deep understanding at least for this series we're not going to get too deep too quickly uh, because again you don't really need that but if you're curious or you want to get into more cutting edge uh, research and stuff like that you're, you're going to need to so uh, as this series progresses we'll be getting a little deeper into things but then also and we'll be talking about concepts that I'm just not going to hit immediately because there's just no need. Uh, and then also at some point I'm going to do a neural networks from scratch video. And by scratch, I mean, we're going to use NumPy. We need something to do like array math or something like that, but no helper functions. Um, just because a list would be really slow. Anyway, it's not important, but if you guys want to get a little deeper, at, you will be able to both in this series and uh, in the future. Anyways, assuming you don't know anything about neural networks, I'm going to go briefly over them, but then again, if you're still kind of fuzzy about just how, even sort of how neural networks work, you can look up videos by 3Blue1Brown. That There's some great visuals there. Uh, also, there's just so much information online as far as like how neural networks work at a basic level, but I'll do my best to explain them really quickly. So, <clears throat> this is a basic neural network. You've got your input data here. And let's assume you've got an uh, a situation where you're trying. You've got images of uh, dogs, cats, and humans, and you want a neural network that can differentiate between an image of dogs, cats, and humans. So over here in your input, you've got features, and these are going to have to be numerical valued in some way it might be the case that they're pixel values and pixel values are already numerical values, right? Zero to 255 for RGB, or if it's grayscaled image, it's just gonna be zero to 255 or some other number. It's usually zero to 255. Anyways, so they'll already be um, in numerical form, but your features could also be, so the input, we call that features. This could also be some sort of categorical type of feature. So it's like uh, has, four legs, has two legs, uh, could be has um, body of covered in hair <laughs> or something like that, or what kind of color, uh, how tall is this thing? That kind of stuff is going to be like descriptive features. And at some point we have to convert that to numerical. So you could just do like a, like just simply the first thing is a zero, the second thing is a one and so on. And we'll, we'll talk much more about that and how to, how to convert things to numbers later. But just understand, it's always going to be a number that is being input. It has to be a number. So anyways, that's your input. So let's assume they're pixel values because that's a pretty common task. Um, <clears throat> so, and it's grayscaled, let's say. So you have this input and then it gets passed to these things called hidden layers. They're called hidden because we don't have control over those layers. The machine has control over those layers. We can read them, we can see what's going on, but we're not changing any values there. 
after they come through the hidden layers, they get passed to an output. And, and again, in general, I'm just going to be super, super vague, or not vague, but ho hopefully not vague, uh, super general here. Let's just say this neuron, this is your dog neuron, this is your cat's neuron, this is your human neuron. And the value that winds up here, in general, we do an argmax function that's just going to ask which of these is the greatest. So dogs, cats, humans. Let's say dogs is 5, cats is 7, humans is 12, right? So that would mean the largest value is humans. So we would say this neural network has predicted it's a human, <laughs> okay? Um, so how does the machine, how does the neural network even learn? It's not complicated at all. We can look at really complicated imagery like this. It's, you don't even really have to think of it this way. But basically, each of these connections, you can see how there's a line drawn from every input to every neuron here, and then every neuron here has a connection to every other one, right, as you continue going forward here. This is what's referred to as a fully connected neural network. They don't have to be fully connected, and we can talk more about how to do different things later on, but in, in general, this one's fully connected. And each line here, each connection, is really a weight. So you've got this input value, and then it gets multiplied by a weight. A bias is optionally added in, and a bias is just an extra, you know, a bias could be three. So it's, you know, the input times the weight plus three, okay? And then it becomes a value in here. And then x2, the same thing is done. And it's and all these are added together into this one neuron. So I've got another image here. And like this is basically what goes on in a single neuron. So you've got all your inputs coming in. Those inputs are being multiplied by a weight. A bias is possibly added. All those are added together. So they're just summed together. And they're passed through an activation function. So the activation function kind of mimics a neuron in your brain, right? Is it firing or isn't it? And it could be a firing or isn't it, so it would be like a stepper function. But in most cases, we use a sigmoid function, so it's actually a range between 0 and 1. And that, again, is just kind of to mimic both a neuron firing or not. And also, it serves a purpose of keeping values from just exploding in your neural network. Um, it just kind of keeps things, again, between 0 and 1. Uh, one of the key concepts that will just keep coming up time and time again is that, <clears throat> in general, neural networks appreciate values between 0 and 1 or negative 1 and 1 in some cases. So um, always keep that in mind. So your input, usually you're going to do what's called scaling and scale it down um, to be between 0 and 1. And then, yeah, even through your network, when if values start exploding into these gigantic values, something's probably going wrong. But way more on that later. The one thing... All you have to really think about is what a neural network does, all it does is each of these weights is what we call a parameter. So same with the biases, so weights and bias. Even this really, really simple neural network that I've hand drawn here, look at all of those parameters. Every single line is, is a parameter, probably two parameters if we consider weights and biases. So what the machine does is it has, it has the ability to modify every single one of those weights independently, right? So it just keeps tweaking all of those so that when we pass data, when we train a neural network, we're passing in this input data and we're telling it, let's say it really is a picture of a human, we would say the desired output, the output I wish you would make in this case is a zero, zero, one, right? Please make that, and it makes its output, and then we determine how wrong that is with loss, and then we have an optimizer that goes back and attempts to update these weights in such a way that it gets closer to predicting the targeted output, and we tend to do this over batches, over millions of samples and slowly over time the neural network learns what exact values to put for each of these weights to hopefully generalize over your data and predict but at the end of the day it just it's like this gigantic function <laughs> with like a million variables sometimes more like you like i'm not even being i'm not exaggerating <laughs> like three million variables is a pretty small neural network 
30 million variables is a regular neural network. So it's just so many things that it gets to tweak and change. And of course, with that comes things, issues like overfitting and stuff like that. And we will talk about that um, <clears throat> moving forward. But really, all a neural network is is just this huge function where we allow the machine to slowly tweak variables and parameters to output desired results. Okay, so now hopefully you have a general and basic understanding of how neural networks work. Again, I, I think it's completely to be expected that you're somewhat vague on how things work. I think one, writing it out in code would help, but also two, there are just vast resources online as far as depicting how neural networks work. And if that's how you learn, I would strongly recommend the three blue, one brown, just type in like to YouTube, three blue, one brown neural network. And I am sure you'll find the series. He is wonderful at visualizations, way better than my hand-drawn photos. So anyways, uh, moving along, <clears throat> we're going to be using PyTorch. Now, chances are you've heard of, for sure, TensorFlow, which is another machine learning library, and there's a, quite a few others. Uh, I want to use PyTorch. One, I, I just start. I just decided one day to learn PyTorch myself, and as I was learning it, I was like, hmm, this would be a really good language to do a, you know, beginner's deep learning series, because PyTorch is like super friendly to the programmer, especially a Python programmer, as opposed to TensorFlow. And in one way it is, is, is with the graph. And the great thing about PyTorch is you don't even need to know what the heck is the graph. What is he talking about? You don't need to know with PyTorch. It's great. With TensorFlow, you have to, you have to learn about the graph because you have to work around the graph. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very challenging. Whereas in PyTorch, you really, you just don't need to know about it. And so, and then also people call it like more Pythonic. And like, what does that actually mean? Um, in general, like with PyTorch, you write Python programming. Like you write the object, you deal with it like it's an object. You, you, it's eagerly executed and there is TensorFlow eager, uh, but it's not the main TensorFlow. And there are certain issues and limitations with using it. Also, it's much slower than regular TensorFlow. And uh, and then the next question, of course, is how does PyTorch compare to TensorFlow in speed? Uh, and they're pretty close, actually. But PyTorch is faster than eager TensorFlow. And that would be the more fair comparison because PyTorch is eager. And what do I mean by that? I mean you can write a line of code in PyTorch. Like, you can have your network. And then you run like one line or you run through one layer and then you could check the output and you could see it. Or also with PyTorch, you, could, you can branch out into different layers and you write pure Python code to do it. It's just, it's just easy to, to make complex networks. There are some tedious things about PyTorch and we'll talk about them when, they, when we get there. But anyways, long story short, we're going to use PyTorch and you're going to love it. So, so let's click on get started. <clears throat> There's like a million ways you can install this. So... I'm gonna let you install it by yourself. Uh, all this stuff should be super simple for you to understand, except for maybe CUDA. If you don't know what CUDA is, go over here, click on none. <laughs> uh, if you have a, an NVIDIA GPU of decent quality, you could enable, uh, you could get the CUDA version and uh, put operations on your GPU. And when you do that, it's, a, it's in general, somewhere between 50 and 100 times faster which makes a big difference in training times. To begin this series, at least for the first few videos, all the code that I'm gonna write is one, I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna be running it on my CPU and it's like totally capable of being run on a CPU. At some point, you are going to need access to a mid-range or better GPU, either locally or in the cloud. Now, uh, if you have access to one locally, you can install it. We'll be talking about how to do that. And then in the cloud, there are lots of options. Uh, this series is sponsored by Linode, who also happens to have the best prices in terms of bang for your buck performance in the cloud. Uh, so you can check them out. I've done a video on exactly how to set everything up on them as well. Um, I'm not saying that because they're a sponsor. They're a sponsor because <laughs> they are simply the best right now anyways, right? Like uh, over time, all these, all these cloud providers are duking it out. So at some point, someone might beat them on price and I'll let you know when that happens. Till then, Linode has the best cloud GPU prices by far. It's like twice as good as anyone else right now. So anyway, um, check them out. But like I said, if if you don't know what CUDA is, don't worry about it right now. Just get the regular CPU version. You're going to be totally fine. You can learn the basics without needing to run on a GPU. But at some point, you will need to run on a GPU. 
So anyway, um, once you have that, go ahead and do your install. I am going to pause for a moment and assume you guys, when, I, when I'm done pausing, I'm going to assume you have PyTorch installed. Great, congratulations on your install. <laughs> So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out, did I have it? Oh, I do. I already opened it up. <clears throat> nice. So uh, I'm going to be coding things in the Jupyter lab, but you can use whatever editor you want. Because remember, you guys have done, you, you're at least not basic programmers anymore. So I'm assuming you guys can have your own editor and be fine. I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook just because one, I can, yay for eager execution, but also <laughs> uh, because it just kind of makes sense, uh, at least when you're trying to learn the very, very basics, running line by line is just useful. Also, if you need to debug things, again, it's just, it's super useful. So I'll be starting in a Jupyter Notebook at some point, we'll probably leave the notebooks behind, uh, but for now, cool. So first of all, like what is PyTorch, right? Like what is that? So again, assuming you know the basics of Python, you're probably familiar with NumPy, which is the, the numerical processing library of Python. Now, <clears throat> the problem with NumPy is what I just explained a moment ago is that it doesn't run on the GPU. So whenever deep learning first came out, there was really, it was very difficult to, to, to really run these things because the, the, your, your CPU, the reason why things are so much faster on your GPU is with a neural network, like I said, the, the thing that is happening is each of these weights is getting updated. So your machine is needing to run thousands and thousands of operation or, of uh, small cal like not even thousand like millions of small calculations basically. And so so the GPU um, I'm trying to think how I exactly want to describe this in what order. Uh, your, let's say your CPU. So your CPU was made to, to do these, not really huge, it's not like these huge calculations, but the CPU is really there under the assumption that most calculations that are going to be made are going to be ma are going to be large calculations, like very much more challenging calculations than modifying little weights, okay? Your GPU is your graphics card, right? So it's computing graphics. And graphics, there's a lot of very small calculations. So we run on the GPU for that reason. Um, so, so running on the GPU is where we want to be for something like deep learning, because what we're trying to do is a lot of simple calculations. And your GPU, like your CPU, probably has something between I don't know four and twelve cores. Okay, a nice GPU has like thousands of cores. <laughs> so it's just it makes a big difference. <clears throat> so. Uh, let me come over here, and so, so like I said, PyTorch is just NumPy on the GPU with some nice helper functions, because <laughs> a lot, like, like, you don't have to write your optimizer and your backpropagation and all these things that probably might not mean anything to you yet, but will soon. Uh, but at its basic core, uh, let's go ahead and import Torch, and can I, uh, probably should have figured this one out first. I uh, wouldn't have minded making my font size larger. There's got to be a way besides zooming in, but I'll just zoom in for now. Um, so import torch, and then let's say you've got two two variables. So we're going to say x equals torch.tensor. Uh, and, I mean, this could go many ways, but let's say like a 5 and a 3, and then you've got y equals torch.tensor. And we can make this a 2 and a 1. We could then say print x times y. It's going to take a second to import torch there, but normally that operation would be much faster. <laughs> but yeah, we just we just multiplied these two arrays. So a tensor is initially kind of a scary sounding word, but basically a tensor is an array. Like that's all you need to think of, right? Um, and so, and it, it, basically a multi-dimensional array. So uh, yeah, so, so it's that's as simple as it gets, right? And what's nice about Torch is we can put this on the GPU, and this could also be on the GPU. And then when we multiply them together, the GPU is doing that math. But again, what just happened just now was actually on the CPU. We weren't really asking very many calculations to run, so it was like no big deal uh, to actually run that. The other thing that we can do is like we can say x equals torch dot zeros. And then we can specify a shape. Let's say, say a two by five. And 
uh, let's go ahead and, well, one thing we can say is, well, we could print x. Uh, then we could also say x.shape. And that gives you, like, the size. And, and before anybody's like, is this really necessary? Why, why are you showing me all these things? Basically, all these things are things that we are going to use. But also, if you're already familiar with NumPy, one thing you might be starting to realize is, hey, they've got zeros in shape. And all these calculations that you tend to need to do or you've done in NumPy, there's a torch variant. So again, we could say y equals torch not rand. Uh, and then we could say 2, 5. Uh, and then we can output y. And there you have just a random initialization of a 2 by 5 uh, tensor. So the next thing I want to show is uh, reshaping. So the one thing that, for whatever reason, they have decided to call something that you are not familiar with is like when you want to actually reshape something. Uh, in NumPy, you would say dot .reshape. Uh, and I believe in TensorFlow, it would be a dot .reshape. In Torch, it's not a, a reshape. It's called, you use a function called, or really a method, called view. So this is a two by five. So let's say we want to do what's called a flatten operation. So a two by five uh, in general, you're not going to be able to put a two by five into a neural network. So let's say it's an image and the image is two by five pixels. <laughs> That's not going to be the case, but let's just say it was. The first thing you have to do before you feed this image through, let's say a basic neural network is you have to flatten it so it would be a one by 10, right? Because there's 10 total elements. If there's two by five, if we flatten it, it would be a one by 10. Well, <clears throat> how do we do that though? So the way we would do that is with a reshape in like NumPy, but here in uh, Torch, it's not view. But one thing to keep in mind, I'll show in a moment, we would say one by 10, right? So there's your one by 10 uh, reshape there. One thing to keep in mind is um, if we print out y again, you'll see, oh, it hasn't actually been modified. So keep in mind that you would need to reassign. Um, so you would need to say y equals y dot view. And I guess, you know, the view sort of makes sense. Like it's like, show me this view, show me y viewed as this shape or something. Like I, I don't really mind the name, but uh, it is different from what we're used to in terms of reshape, but it's, it's honestly not that bad. I, People made a big deal about that whenever I was reading about updates to <laughs> to PyTorch. People were complaining about that. I'm like, really? I, I mean, V is a good name. So anyway, um, okay. So so as you can see, it's just doing simple math with um, arrays, basically. Now again, there are lots of little functions that we can also import to help us specifically with neural networks. Um, but at its core, it really is just a library to help you do array math. <laughs> so anyways, um, I think I'm gonna cut it here and then in the next tutorial, we're gonna start uh, talking about the actual data itself and then probably that'll consume a tutorial and then we'll talk about building the neural network and then training the neural network. So um, as strange as it might sound, we're gonna dedicate the entire next video to data alone. And even then it's pretty simple, but if you think about it as a machine, you know, as somebody who's doing machine learning, pro like your biggest job <laughs> is like the, the one thing you have control over is data. <laughs> and then, you know, you can, you sort of have control like in other ways, like you can change the shapes and sizes of your neural network. You, like you get to dictate what the structure is. But in general, the biggest thing for you to do is provide good data. It's kind of like with a lot of things like audio or something where you say garbage in, garbage out. If you put in bad data, you're probably going to get bad data out. So anyways, in the next tutorial, we're going to discuss data and we're going to go easy mode on the data first. <laughs> and then on the next neural network we build, we'll get a little more complicated. But anyways, we've, we've covered a lot of basic stuff here, but we've covered a lot of stuff. If you have questions, comments, concerns, if I said something wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, you can leave those below. Also, we have a Discord. That's discord.gg slash Centex. If you've got any qu uh, questions, you need help on something, uh, come check out the Discord. Also, special shout out to my channel members who have been with me now for a year. Uh, Harsoth, Angel, Fontalvo, Mr. Gene Jeans, and Edward McCain. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel, you can click on that beautiful blue join button, get early access to content, shout outs, 
Uh, special rank in the Discord. That's pretty much covers it, I think. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I will see you guys in another video.